In this video, I want to talk about setting up a Tico VFD and this three phase induction motor that I've got. As you can see, the VFD is one horsepower and the motor is a half horsepower. Um, and the VFD is 4.3 amp output. And the motor, because I'm using the 240 volt configuration, is a 1.82 amp demand. Um, you can see on the VFD as well that the Hertz range is is wide on this. It's 0 to 599 Hertz, which is crazy fast. Uh, theoretically, because this motor is a 1725 RPM, I can only push it to 200% the the rated value so I can go up to 120 Hertz but in reality I can only push it to a hundred Hertz which I'll talk about more later in the video here I'm connecting the input and the output wires to the VFD the input on this is 120 volt AC uh, single phase and the output is 240 volt three phase this video is good information for woodworkers especially because at some point you're going to want to upgrade your lathe or make a belt grinder or reconfigure your bandsaw, what have you. And if you can find a cost effective way of doing this like I did, I went to the auction and I picked up this three phase motor for basically $8. I bought it in a lot but uh, it worked out to be $8 per motor. The VFD cost $150. That's that's not too bad whenever you look at the cost of a machine that's already got a VFD integrated into it. In the previous shot, you could see the VFD was flashing 5 hertz on the screen. That's how it comes default so that you don't damage anything whenever you first hook it up. You basically have to configure it before you can do anything. And here, I'm not going to go into real detail about all of these parameters, but basically... What I changed or what I, I set up was um, I wanted to be able to use the potentiometer that's on the pad. It doesn't come configured that way, so I have to set that parameter. I uh, set the frequency limit, the hertz limit, um, acceleration and deceleration time, the rated motor RPM, the rated amperage for the motor, the voltage for the motor, and the carrier frequency and carrier mode. So I've got previous experience with uh, several different manufacturers of VFDs and they're all basically the same. The, the codes for the parameters are different and the, the wording is the verbiage may be a little different, um, but they're all basically the same. The best thing to do is, is spec the one out that you want. And whenever you get it, just sit down with the manual before you hook up any wires or you do anything and read all of the parameters and try to come to an understanding of, of what everything is. There are some things in there that you will never ever use, but at least you get a good idea before you do anything. So I don't want to make this too complicated, but just some VFD basics is that it's taking an AC voltage and turning it into a DC voltage and then pulse width modulating it to make it look like an AC sine wave to the motor. And how it does that is through a device called a IGBT. And so the carrier mode and the carrier frequency are, are the reason why I'm bringing this up because those are two things depending on your application that could uh, cause damage to your motor potentially. In my application, the VFD is bigger than the motor that I'm, I'm driving, so I really shouldn't have too much trouble with it. Um, but the carrier mode is the duty cycle of the IGBT, so mine comes defaulted to two-thirds operation, so it's 66% duty cycle. Um, I set it to 100% duty cycle, and then the carrier frequency is set to 5 kilohertz it has a range up to 16 kilohertz i set it to 12 kilohertz and i'll point out later in the video when it's running at 5 kilohertz and at 12 kilohertz but what that does is the higher you get the the frequency it looks more like a sine wave and so it runs smoother 
and there's less whine or, or noise coming from the motor. The trade-off is, is that can create more heat because there's more pulses and if you're overheating your motor then of course you're breaking down the windings and possibly causing bearing failure so uh, that, that's the trade-off so if you change those settings you have to make sure that you're not putting too much heat stress on the, the VFD or the motor I ran mine for 30 minutes and I only had a, a 3 degrees Celsius rise in temperature and that was unloaded but that's that's very good and I should stay well within the temperature range. So this motor appeared to have uh, easy previous life. It doesn't look like it was used very hard. I think the bearings actually just the grease dried up in them um, because they were still tight. I just went ahead and ordered a couple of uh, their 6203 bearings. That's a really standard uh, bearing. Um, they don't cost that much. I think it was like 12 bucks for a, a set of bearings. I paid more for the bearings than I did the motor. In the previous shot there, you could see I was sorting out the wiring. And I'll just cover this real quick for those that don't know. This is a, a nine wire motor and I'm using the 220 volt configuration. The four, five, and six wires are ganged together. One, seven, two, eight, and three, nine are your three incoming uh, lines or phases. And it doesn't matter what sequence they're in. And if it's going clockwise and you want it to go counterclockwise you just reverse any of those three uh, and it'll go the other direction This is with the carrier mode set to two thirds and the carrier frequency set to five kilohertz and you can audibly hear the uh, frequency in the motor. So I said before that I should be able to run this motor at 120 hertz and really the only thing keeping you from doing that is, is mechanical. It really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the the field although that there is some other things there that I'm not going to get into it makes it way too complicated but basically your limitation at, at going really fast with the motor is mechanical um, and whenever I push it to 120 I can feel a vibration developing on the housing of the motor whenever I, I back it down to about 105 or 106 I can feel that go away and so to be safe, I just pushed it down to 100 and I don't feel any abnormal vibration through the, the whole entire range. You're supposed to set the carrier frequency to as low as you can get away with. So having it set at 12 instead of the limit of 16 um, is kind of a trade-off between noise level and heat generation. 
and I'm happy with the way it operates. It doesn't really start to make any kind of real noise until I get down to around 42 hertz, which I don't think I'll be running at anyways. And you can see that I have the display set up to show me uh, hertz and the temperature of the VFD. And at the end of this, there is a, a small bit where the has the original bearings still running in the motor. So you can kind of compare between what it sounds like when I finished and what it sounded like when I started. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.